I said that the worst case time complexity to find an element in an AVL tree is big O of log n, but we need to actually prove this. To start our proof, let's define n sub h to denote the minimum number of nodes that can form an AVL tree with height h. So in other words, let's imagine I have an AVL tree, so here's the root. The root has some left subtree and some right subtree. Each of these subtrees could either be empty or it could have one node or many nodes, just some subtree of some form. So in this example, if this AVL tree has height h, then I want to minimize the number of nodes that can form this AVL tree. So if this is such an AVL tree that has height h with the minimum number of nodes, this tree would have in its entirety n sub h nodes by definition. This is just the definition of the n sub h term that I've introduced. It's the smallest number of nodes that an AVL tree of height h could have. So if this is an AVL tree, so I know that if this entire tree has height h, one of its two subtrees must have height h minus 1. The height of one of the subtrees, I just arbitrarily picked the right subtree, must be h minus 1. So actually, I'll denote it like this. Because h minus 1 height in this subtree plus one edge to connect it to the root yields height h overall. Also, if I'm trying to minimize the total number of nodes in the tree, that means that this subtree must have n sub h minus 1 nodes within it. The smallest number of nodes that could be in a tree of height h minus 1, an AVL tree of height h minus 1. So by property of an AVL tree, the root can only have a balance factor of negative 1, 0, or 1. So if this subtree has a height n sub h minus 1, the absolute worst case scenario, sorry, if this subtree has a height h minus 1, because an AVL tree, this root has to have a balance factor of 0, negative 1, or 1, this subtree, in its worst case scenario, must have a height of h minus 2. Because then the left height would be h minus 2 plus 1. So the left height would be h minus 1. The right height would be h minus 1 plus 1. So h. And then the balance factor would be h minus h minus 1, which would be 1. So this is the worst possible scenario. If this right subtree has height h minus 1, the left subtree has height h minus 2. And therefore, if I want to minimize the total number of nodes, it has n sub h minus 2 nodes within it. So recapping, this subtree has h minus 1 height with n sub h minus 1 nodes. This subtree has h minus 2 height with n sub h minus 2 nodes. And the overall tree has h height because it's 1 plus h minus 1, and it has a total of n sub h nodes. This has actually defined a recurrence relation. The total number of nodes in this tree, maybe I'll use a different color right now, the total number of nodes in this tree, n sub h, well, how many nodes do I have? I have n sub h minus 1 nodes in this subtree plus n sub h minus 2 nodes in this subtree, these are h's, plus 1 for my root, right? So this n sub h minus 1 is all of the nodes in this right subtree, n sub h minus 2 is all of the nodes in the left subtree, and 1 for the root. Originally, in a prior video, I defined the height of a binary search tree as the number of edges along the height. But temporarily for this specific proof, I'm going to increase this number by one. So in other words, in my prior definition, an M, uh, a one node tree would have a height of zero. 
And therefore, the empty tree, a tree with zero nodes, so no nodes whatsoever, if this has a height of zero, technically this should have a height of negative one. But I'm going to adjust this for this video specifically, just for this proof. Let's say that an empty tree has a height of zero and a one node tree, so a single node with no children, has a height of one. So instead of counting the number of edges to determine the height, let's just count the number of nodes. It's equivalent in terms of our big O time complexity, but it'll make the proof much more simple. So using this numbering, I can define some trivial base cases. So one of the base cases is n sub one equals one. So what does this mean? This is the smallest number of nodes a tree of height one could have. I've defined a tree of height one to be this tree, the tree that has a single node. Therefore, the number of nodes in a tree with height one is just one. Also, I can have a definition of another base case of n sub two equals two, because the smallest number of nodes that I can have in a tree with height two is two. It would be a root node, which I've defined as a height of one, and it has a child. I drew it as a right child. It could have been a left child. Doesn't matter. This tree, using my updated definition of height, which is number of nodes, this has a height of two. One, two. So now I've defined a recurrence relation. I've defined two base cases. And now I can reduce my recurrence relation. So I started here. I can say n sub h minus 1 equals n sub h minus 2 plus n sub h minus 3 plus 1. So this is the exact same recurrence, actually, just instead of doing h, h minus 1, and h minus 2, I'm doing one smaller value of h, h minus 1, h minus 2, and h minus 3. I can now plug in this entire thing here. So if I take this entire thing and plug it in here, I can get n sub h. Uh, let me make that a better subscript. n sub h equals n sub h minus 2 plus n sub h minus 3 plus 1. So I just plug this in here. And then now the rest of it I copy, plus n sub h minus 2 plus 1. I'm running out of space, so I'm going to delete the original example. Uh, but feel free to just rewind, rewind the video to, to look at it again. So I'm going to just delete this example. There we go. Just, ah, it's not letting me delete it, but oh, there we go. And then I'll fix this arrow that I've now messed up. There we go. This came from here. Okay, so now I have some more space. So this is where I left off. N sub H equals, I plugged in this for here. N sub H minus 2 plus N, minus, uh, N sub H minus 3 plus 1 plus n sub h minus 2 plus 1. Uh, maybe I'll use a different color to make it a little easier to read. So continuing from here, well, we know that n sub h is greater than 2 times n sub h minus 2. And the reason for this is because, uh, oh, well, so now the, the original drawing would have helped out a bit. Let's draw it here. When I had a tree with n sub h nodes in it, one of its subtrees had n sub h minus 1. One of them had n sub h minus 2. two and then it had plus 1. So n sub h is n sub h minus 2 plus n sub h minus 1 plus 1. This is by definition larger than this. So n sub h minus 1 is larger than n sub h minus 2. So if n of h n sub h equals this, 
by definition, it's larger than 2 times n sub h minus 2. Because that would even be, that would be less than this. Therefore, n sub h is also greater than 2 to the h minus 2. Therefore, log of n sub h is greater than log of 2 to the h over 2. So this is true because this is even smaller than this. It's less than or equal to. Uh, so yeah, I just took the log of both sides. Then I get, if I, uh, I can do 2 log n sub h, this is an h, um, is greater than h. So if 2 log n sub h is greater than h, that means that h is less than 2 log n sub h. Therefore, my height is big O of log n sub h. And remember, n sub h is the minimum number of nodes that can form an AVL tree with height h. So this is basically the worst possible scenario because I have the smallest number of nodes that have this height. So this is our final result. This is our proof. We have proven that the height of my tree, which is the bound on find, insert, and remove, is indeed big O of log n.